there's hundreds of sketches behind everything and there's lots of drawings. Um, lots of preparation for, for uh, fabricating. Uh, this particular installation is dependent on uh, technology. It, the um, forms that are holding the bottles up, for example, were only possible because I was using a laser cutter. Um, the laser cutter, in turn, dictated uh, the importance of planes in each form. And so, uh, because a laser cutter only cuts in one direction, to get a three-dimensional form, you had to um, piece things together in, in multiple directions. You had to have illusion of, of 3D when there was, in fact, just stacked layers. Uh, but the layering of that that's a quality of a laser cutter was, was chosen very carefully for this because of the layering of information that's going on with what's coming out of the ground, the layering of information with what can happen after it comes out of the ground, uh, what's still below the ground. Uh, so layering that the laser cutter uh, dictated was also part of the, the basic premise for the project. front corner of the mat, a picture in the um, uh, landfill behind the Murano glass plant in uh, Venice. And what struck me about the photo or the, the image that I collected was this fine art scrap, if you will, coming back through the landfill. So in a way, it was forcing its own, its own uh, rebirth, its own, its own uh, reclamation which was really pretty, pretty appealing. I think that, you know, as far as interior design goes, one of the biggest mistakes that interior designers make is that they quit growing as designers. They grow as business people, but they quit growing as designers. I do um, consultation in the Middle East, and one of the things that uh, just strikes you instantly about Islamic architecture and Islamic design is how often a form or a room, an interior, an installation comes and f almost floats from the base and becomes, joins the surrounding uh, surfaces and moves overhead. The individual pieces are numbered. Um, it's impossible that the name of this piece is attrition, and uh, the name of the series that it's part of uh, involves, um, well, it, it originally was called Murano Redux, which is talking about a, somewhat of a rebirth. If you look at the materials that are coming out of the ground in this landfill, it um, reminds one of uh, the book of Ezekiel, where um, Ezekiel is going through the valley of the bones that are, that, are, they're, that are having their own second life, but yet it's not a second life that's real. Uh, if you look at the forms, the first form in each series has a quote from Ezekiel talking about bones uh, rising and, and having sinews on the bones, but, but there's no breath in them. So it's, it's, it's rising, but it's still, still not quite. Um, what it was before, before it had uh, died or had been buried. The numbers, uh, you can't deal with, with these topics without dealing with religion. And I've dealt with religion at several levels in this piece. The numbers on each one and the Arabic below the number is, is an Islamic name for Allah, God, uh, in the Quran. So all 99 names that are recognized as part of uh, Islamic tradition are represented there. But if you look more closely, you'll see that on the overhead piece, there's also references to, to God, which is, is part of any kind of attrition or part of any kind of uh, redemption. Uh, those are uh, anglicized Hebrew uh, names of God in the Old Testament. And if you look at some of these, these forms, um, there's music on, on the forms. If you look at the orbs, there's music on, on the orbs. That music is, 
a static reproduction, sheet, basically sheet music, that is a mass that I wrote. Uh, and this particular part is the Kyrie eleison, uh, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. So in some ways, those numbers, the stuff overhead, the orbs, they're, they're really addressing three prevalent uh, major religions in, in this world. And what's interesting about all those religions is the commonality among them. Uh, we tend to think about the differences. Uh, it's the commonality that I find most intriguing. And among other things, all of those uh, traditions address things like stewardship of the earth, taking care of Mother Earth, taking care of this planet that we're on, and that goes right back to this concept of the landfill. Um, the bottles that are that are on these forms are all uh, recycled bottles. Um, uh, so that's kind of what it's all coming from. Mm -hmm.